even liked I was muted the entire time. My bad. I was just playing with my settings, getting ready to talk today. So I'll be doing more sculpting. And what I want to show in particular is a little bit of how you can use a program like Blender to do really nice renders of your stuff uh, using Eevee, which is a real-time render. It's a lot better than what you're going to get otherwise. So if you want to give it that little extra zhuzh, I'll be doing some more character stuff as soon as I'm done with that. So I'll play a little time doing like a lighting setup, and then maybe I'll start on a new character and show you how I approach it. Uh, if you're in the chat, say hi, throw some stuff out there. Maybe throw a suggestion for a character you'd like to see me sculpt in the time I'm doing the stream. Plan on, you know, ending a little bit. Also, my streams. Gotta be, I'm gonna pause my updating on my little uh, syncing on my drive here. My uh, cloud render syncing stuff. So let's go ahead, pause all that, try to reduce the load up, get my uh, really bad stream condition right now. So no, hopefully it smooths out a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about this character, how I'm gonna light her and how I'm gonna put her out. So right now, the one I was working on the other week, I have an idea. It's this sunlight coming straight from back here. Of course, I'm like invisible now. Cool. But that I know that's one of the reasons my camera's going wonky like crazy. Is uh, too hard of a time trying to match all of my lighting set setups here. So let's get my chroma key. Now I can go back to more of a traditional chroma key color. Something like that should work. Okay, much better. Okay, so uh, what I got here, excuse me a little bit, is my character, and um, it's all in different pieces. Uh, the back kind of got messed up, but I'm most concerned with the front right now. So I've got her in, gosh, I don't even know how many different pieces it is. So the crucial part for me is to get this all as one object going into the other scene. Now, I have a, a program that lets me do that automatically, but I'll be showing you a way of doing this um, manually without needing it. I use GoV, which is like a GoZ plugin for Blender. Bottom line, it's pretty easy to use. I won't be using that today because I'll show you a way to do it without any plugins installed. You will need Blender, which is free, really easy to get, and a wonderful piece of software. Uh, if you take a 247 with me this summer, you know I taught it in Blender. I love Blender. It's really fun to model in. Um, so if you're a Maya person, you're terrified of Blender, don't be scared. It's all right. Pretty easy to use. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take all of this and I want to make a new version. Now I have this dummy version of my character. It's not posed, but it's hidden, so that's okay. I want to make sure everything I want together is visible. So I go to Merge and I go to Merge Visible. Now normally I click this and it looks like nothing happened. Everything's still in separate subtools. It's because my merged object is now up here in this new merge thing. So I can click it. And we have this object with all of its subdivisions, all of its highest resolution stuff, all as one object. If I shift F and I frame it up, I can see it's 7 million um, little points, which is fine for ZBrush. ZBrush can handle 7 million points, no problem. You can do 40 in this without running into too much trouble. However, more than a million, Blender, Maya, any of the renderers, stuff like that is not gonna handle it very well. So what we wanna do is reduce the overall size of this first. And I'm gonna do that using the Z plugin decimation master. So I'll show you what it looks like. And uh, you can get to it by going to Z plugin. I like to take this little node and drag it into the side window to keep it up to the side so I can set my things. And I wanna turn on a couple of things. For one, I made poly paint the way that I painted the colors on here and I wanna keep that. What it's gonna do is it's gonna keep the painting on the verts. So I can say keep and use poly paint. And I'm gonna do pre-process current. This is what's going to take the longest time. It analyzes my mesh. It looks through the whole thing. It determines how much stuff I really have in it. And uh, then we're going to figure out how can I smooth things out? How can I shave my, my colors, my render, my geometry, and still have a good product at the end of the day? So it's going to take some time. What it's doing right now is it's looking over the whole surface. Then 
I get to set a decimation level. The reason they do this and it's not just a button where you press it and you decimate it, they pre-process it first is because that's the heaviest step. Beyond that, I can change this percentage decimation a bunch of times and try out a bunch of different amounts of decimation and see what my result is. Because decimate is exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna reduce the uh, actual number of uh, verts or points on this whole thing. So I'm gonna take this 7 million and I'm gonna try to get it maybe in the 100,000 kind of range, ideally without losing any detail. And that should load up just fine. So uh, the term decimate, actually, because I'm just gonna give you history stuff, I'm just gonna spitball right now because I just gotta wait for this um, decimate to finish. The term decimate actually comes from a practice by the Roman legions, where as punishment for a unit maybe retreating or failing in battle, they would decimate the unit, meaning they would kill one out of every 10 people in the unit so that the other nine out of 10 would remember uh, what happened and they would learn the, 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 uh, the consequences of failure. Now we use it to mean just like taking something as it is and reducing it significantly. Um, but it, the original term, now we use decimate to mean like 90% of something is gone. But it was actually originally one tenth. Uh, in fact, most ancient battles were like that. You didn't have the kind of casualties and losses that we see in modern conflicts. It was generally a couple people ran out, a couple people died, and then most people went home. And it's like, um, like almost like wrestling as kids. Sometimes someone gets hurt, but most of the time, most people live through the battles. So it's kind of glorious and fun. And maybe you kill somebody, but it's not that common. Most of the people die of injuries later or infection or things like that were the most common killers. Um, the whole total warfare is actually a modern concept and not really found in the ancient or medieval world. So that's what everyone tuned into for my Zebra stream to listen to me show that I studied history in my undergrad, but that's not what I'm teaching now. I'm teaching ZBrush. It is still computing because seven million points. I think I can expect to sit here for a minute or two. You got a questions in the chat. It's a good time to throw them out. And uh, I mean, hell, I'll just talk about Star Wars for two hours. I mean, it's not gonna be two hours, but it'll probably be another minute or two. And uh, that's how you know, because you can still see the dotted line. The program's still giving me a data line over the top. That's how I know it hasn't frozen. The more complicated your model, the more points it has, the more shape. This has a lot of different shapes, tons of different objects to it. There we go. It took three minutes, three seconds. That's not so bad. Kind of seemed like an eternity. Three minutes is not that much time. But I really leave this on right now because I want you to see the wireframe as it stands. Uh, I'll turn off the coloring on the wireframe. I'll leave it on like this. So you can see... Here's the current wireframe, like what our current density of our mesh is, and then what happens when I do decimate current. So it's gonna take a second to read through. It's generating a file, and then look at what happened. It reduced, if I look at it, it doesn't look any different, but it went from seven million to one million. But that's not high enough. I'm gonna undo once, I'm gonna keep everything else. I'm gonna go decimation, I'm gonna set this to 10. And now, Decimate current. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna run through the same thing. Again, looks like no change has been made at all, but now we're down to like under a million. And this is probably something I can drop into the program. We can see up close what it's done is it creates triangles out of all of my geometry. Now this would be terrible for a game ready, especially something I needed to rig. But if I was making something that's like a rock or a statue or I'm trying to like bake a texture and I need just high resolution geometry, this wouldn't be so bad. So I'm gonna use this version um, and I can always decimate it more if I want to. But now it's stored all of this data into vert color. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to export this tool as an OBJ and let's call it shake it OBJ. This is a separate file. It's an object file, and it doesn't contain any rigging information, nothing special. It just contains like my paint information and my kind of raw um, data about where all my points are. So I'm gonna open up Blender. I'm using the latest version of Blender, which is 2.83. Um, 2.9 is coming out soon. I'm really excited because there's some really cool features in that. So I'm just gonna do a general. I don't need anything in here. And I'm gonna come up to file and import and let's bring in my object. So 
so navigate a desktop find my guy and I'm looking for this one so it's gonna take a second because it's a pretty big file um it's probably a couple megabytes in size and it's still under a million but it's 700,000 which is not an insignificant number of things depending on your computer or your computer's power you might have to reduce that down even more I kind of think about something like I believe it's like 4 million is what most common viewports can handle without too much trouble. So I should be able to render this. If not, I might have to go back in, set my decimate to about 5% and set it out. But it looks like I'm able to run it fine, move around, not too bad. So here's my character, um, all my features. I did, have, I do have a couple problems here that I'm seeing now, which I'm not too pleased about because it looked like when I did my decimate, I forgot to smooth out some of the stuff. Boy, it never got smooth. That's interesting. So I might have to do clean up on these little props, or maybe I can just get away with smoothing them out. I'm going to separate them really quick. So I'm going to take this whole object, tab it, and this is going to give me everything in here. If you haven't used Blender before, tab is how we actually get into edit mode. I'm going to tap P, and I'm going to separate objects by loose parts. It's going to split this whole thing into individual pieces. Tab again because I'm not really going to need to make edits. And now I can come here and go to modify. And I can do a subdivision insert. Just smooth some things out. Definitely doesn't like this, but I bet I can dequadrangulate it. Let's see if I can. I don't want to decimate in here. There's unsubdivided work. Ooh, got an idea. I'm gonna use a tool in here. So this, like, I'm a little annoyed because I don't want all these little triangles. It's what's making it hard to subdivide this. But what I'll do is if I can select these edges. Let's get this by itself. I'm just gonna bring it in to a single object, take it from here, and let me get all of this. Yeah, why not? Just clicking around, holding control, which goes shortest path. And now can shift E will let me set it to sharp. I'll do the same thing here. Just holding control and clicking. Gives me shortest path. Shift E. Sharpen it up. And now if I go to Shade Smooth, and I go to Modifier, Subdivision Surface, I can use Creases. Not perfect. Maybe add one more Subdivision Surface after this and not use Creases there. That'll have to do for what I want to do, because I don't want to go back in. I would should go back in and redecimate it, but who wants to watch me do all that? Somebody does, but I'm not going to do it. Shift this over a little bit, just moving it a little manually to get it where I want it. Same deal, just isolating it. Normally, this is something I would say for you, I'd recommend just go ahead and fix it um, in your decimate. Do it again. I just don't want my one viewer to wait for another couple of minutes for me to do that decimation. Okay. Let's go around the circle, shift E, bring them out, subdivision surface, and I'm going to add another one. And this one is going to be not using creases, but I'll set this one up a little higher. And that'll give me some of the shape that I'm looking for. Let's set some of the same stuff here. I'll go up a couple of notes on this. Okay, great. Not perfect, but it'll do. So I've got my character here. But well, the question is, how do I get all of my colors? I don't have them right now. So I did everything in polypaint, which means if I go into shading, I can add my polypaint in this tab. So I'm going to do that by, in my little tab here, Shift A. I'm going to go to search, and I'm going to look for vert color. This is the vertex color on my model. All I have to do is plug it into base color and give it a second. Did it export? No, it didn't. Good job, model. Hmm. That's annoying. 
because I guess when I OBJ exported it, it didn't keep my hurt color. Dang it, because I used the Gozi plugin last time. All right, that's what I'm going to do it this time, too. And uh, before I do, let's step. Uh, Do spot that. Dang it. All right. Sorry to my one viewer, but I'm going to decimate this again. My mea culpa. My apologies. Because I realize there's a couple things I do need to change about the way this is put together. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. You can delete something in here. You'll notice when I delete it, it turns into a star because a uh, subtool can't be empty. It just doesn't have a tool. But now if I go back into my tool list, that little guy isn't doesn't exist anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this because I did it using dynamic sub D and I need to sub D it sub D. Same with you. So shift D and then sub D sub D. And then let's go ahead and move to make a quick adjustment. Here, Marquise. The little choker here can look correct. Now, same deal, merge visible, give it a second, and come into the tool that I just made. Keep all, keep all the poly paint. Let's do. Sorry, it's going to take another three minutes and three seconds. I guess I could set a timer. In the meantime, I'm gonna see if I can determine exactly why my poly paint didn't transfer over using OBJ. I guess vert color might not, vert color should be an OBJ. Mm -mm -mm. ZBrush, vert color, OBJ. I can always just use the go B thing because that'll work just fine. So ZBrush isn't a true 3D modeling program, which is one of the reasons it doesn't have the same uh, systems that everyone else has in terms of lighting and rendering. It has all fake stuff that uses a matte cap system with its voxel voxel system which is why it can run like 40 million points without any problem but can't light it and the final presentation doesn't look very good so i want to show you that after going through this pain in the ass of like setting it out how like a couple minutes of lighting can make an enormous difference in how good a final version of your model looks and we'll compare and contrast um a best possible render they literally call it bpr in zbrush what a best possible render looks like in zbrush and what a good render in another software looks like. I could use Marmoset too, but I want to show you Blender because Blender is free. Um, This is some riveting streaming right now of me staring at my model, waiting for it to finish. I ran out of all my decimate um, references, historical references. I'll show you this and then I'll do a new sculpt because new sculpting is fun sculpting. You know, it's funny. Everybody requested I do these earlier in the day and then like, where are people at? I think I'll do the zooms like early, like right away. And then I'll just do these streams like at five or whatever, because that's when I feel like doing them. Because it's just sort of evening work for me. I love though, with this class, one of my favorite things is just getting to like do tons of sculpting. Like so many of my classes, I spend so much time troubleshooting and like making tutorials and stuff. And I like in the ZBrush class, kind of just dinking and making stuff. But that's what makes it so much fun to do this class is get to just explore and experiment. Ha, 
Look at that. It was a full second faster. So now I can take this whole guy. Same deal. Let's decimate current. Not. Okay, that's good to number. This time I'm going to use this, which is GoZ, which is um, will export everything using its own system. So I'm going to get you out. I'm going to delete all of this, everything in my scene. And I'm going to click this little guy. Uh, it's a button that lets me look for anything that's exporting from GoZ. It's a listener. So when that's clicked, if I go into ZBrush and now I just click this all next to GoZ, well, either one, I mean, this is the current sub tool. And I click this guy. It's going to shoot, shoot it out. And I click into my Blender file. And now in Blender, it's going to load unless it completely crashes on me, which is possible. I'll give it a second. I was doing this earlier with my uh, Freakazoid sculpt, so I want to do the same thing here. Ah, it loaded. Perfect. So same deal. I've got the object in here. Um, I'm going to keep it all together for right now. I'll turn off the listener because I don't need it. Go into shading. And now let's try that again with A. And I'm going to do search vert color. Fingers crossed, everybody. There we go. So now that brought in all my colors on everything. It's basically like a statue, so it kind of brought everything in. But now I'll show you, like, what a little bit of lighting can do. So when I'm working inside of lighting, inside of Blender, I always want to have two windows open, my final render and my um, starting point. So up at the top anywhere, I can drag out from any corner and make another window. I'm going to turn off this, turn off that. I'm going to set this to viewport shading, which means it's actually shading it based on the lighting. Let's add a camera. Add camera. So this is adding a camera to the scene. And I'm going to set it in here. View and cameras and deck. Uh, let's do a line view. So I'm going to align active camera to my view. Once I won't do that. Well, let's try it in here. View camera line view. There we go. So now this has set my camera to look through whatever my viewport is. And I like to do kind of like an Instagram-y kind of thing. So in my settings, in my little print window, I'm going to set it to 2000 by 2000. So it gives me a nice little square. I hit N to open up this little panel. And in view, I'm going to say lock camera to view. And to close it. And now my camera is set to follow my view. Do the same thing here. We want this one to look through the camera. Get my little tool set open. And then I can close that. I want to leave this window, hit T, leave this window really closed. This one, I'm not looking through the camera. That one, I will. So that way, I can um, decide how I want to render my character. Maybe like so. So I'm looking on this side as I'm moving the camera here. That looks pretty cool. I like giving a little space. Like putting the character right in the middle is pretty boring. So I like giving her a little space and just looking for an interesting silhouette. That looks pretty good. I'll click this. So now I'm in here and I'm looking in there. I need to start adding some lights and maybe a background. So shift A, let's make a plane. Let's R, X, 90 to rotate at 90 degrees. I'm gonna scale that sucker way up and push it way back. So I just want enough that it's it's out of the way that it's not gonna affect my lighting, but it's still gonna be like a background color for what I wanna do. I like it because it's just easier to control than the other stuff. And I can give it, um, right now I'm gonna leave it pretty default. I'm gonna create a new material and I'm gonna give it a background in my setting. And this is just gonna let me set it to a color or no color. So I'll leave it pretty, desaturated and pretty dull for now because that's usually like ideal for lighting a character but we'll get there right now the character is pretty dark because there's no lighting and everything 
and I just need to start adding some lights. I like to drop them all in as omnidirectional. Shift A, and let's go to light, and uh, these point lights. You can see there's like the slightest hint of this light as I move it around the scene. Eevee is really cool because it's actually a real-time render engine like Unity or Marmoset or anything else, which means I don't have to wait to see what's going to happen like uh, a render engine you might usually use. Because it's real-time and it works really well, it's really easy to like light stuff on the fly. This is going to be my key light, which is like we want to think about, I want my key light direction to maybe be on this side. So this is going to be my primary light. Let's set it up pretty high. Let's do 5,000. Maybe too high. Let's do 2,000. Oh, 1,000. That's not bad. Like we're starting to get it a little bit closer here. And we just want to get a good number that gets plenty of light on this character. We can keep playing with it. Now, this is very strong light, but we don't have a light that's going to, we want to fill the other side. So I'm going to duplicate this, Shift B, and now I have what's called a fill light. This is on the opposite side. So if the camera's here, I want this one and then this one. This light is designed to fill in the shadows. So you can see if we turn it off, it's very dark on that side. But we cut it down to something like maybe 400, maybe even less. Just so that without it, like the shadows are too dark, we still get shadows, but they're not quite as severe. I'm gonna reduce this down to 500. Let's keep going. Not bad. Now I'm gonna set these both to um, spots because spotlight gives me more control over where it goes. I can move this little yellow nub to show where I want it to be. And I want to kind of highlight her face and her character. And I want to let some of the other stuff fade out a little bit. I'm going to set the blend up really high so we can see it's not a sharp light, it's a very blended light. And I can set the range of it because it's going to help like the legs and everything kind of fade out a little bit. And I actually want to do that because it's going to draw more of the attention to the top of the face. I'm going to do the same thing with this, set this to a spotlight, point it on the opposite side of the face, which is what I'm most concerned with lighting, widen it out quite a bit. These, these lights are pretty close to the character, so um, I don't have to go as strong on the power as I might otherwise, which is nice because it's a little easier to control just by dragging it across. And let's soften this up too. Now I could make these lights like give them some color, like a P is often really nice in a warm color, so we can see the difference here. So white versus a little bit of warmth kind of like really brings out her skin tones. And then a shadow is often nice in just a slight blue. We never want to go like full blue like that. It's, I mean, not never. Sometimes it's interesting. But just something really, really subtle because it creates some interesting contrast with the characters and gives us some interesting shadows to play with. Just kind of zooming in on let's get my camera node thing back so I can see what it's looking like as I'm making some of these changes. I'm gonna leave this more closer to white. So now I got this. Um, I'm gonna move this this key up a little bit, rotate it down a little bit. Again, like before, like, where do I fill that in? How strong? And that's not bad. Now, the big thing is, yeah, I'm lighting the character. It's the most important thing to do. But another thing we really want to do is kind of get her to stand out from the background. Ooh, um, one more thing. I want to get some different materials. I don't want all these to have the same material on them because I want the glasses uh, here to be see-through. So tab um, to get into the character, and we're going to split it into parts. Um, before I do that, though, definitely should save it. Um, let's do File, Save, and I'm going to go up to my Shake It, and Shake It Render. So this is my, my render scene. And I can set, save my file that way. If something crashes, I don't lose all my work. So um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Key lights, uh, rim lights. So I have my key lights, but my rim light is going to help my character from fading out into the background. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to change up all those materials, C, and I'm going to split it up by loose parts so that I can select individual things and give them their own materials much, much easier. 
tab to get back into object mode. Let's select these glasses and I want a duplicate of this material, but the difference is it's going to have some transparency to it. So blend mode, I'm going to set it to alpha blend. And I'm going to go size. Let's change the alpha to be lower. And I'm going to set the roughness to be really low. So it's like really shiny, maybe not that shiny. I might change this from its current setup to just because it's all one object anyway. So I'm looking at this duplicated guy. I'm going to pull this out, and that way I can just do um, base color, and I can just use a color for it. A little bit darker. Just playing with some of the kind of colors of things. Cool. Some twinge. Using that subsurface color to like tint. If I go introduce any rotation and reflection, just going through and changing some of these settings to see what they do. Index of refraction is how does it affect or reflect light differently. The different materials have different indexes of refraction. You can actually look that up for different things. But I like going a little higher with it because I want it to have that like really neutral. Shadow mode also is going to be um, try out a couple of modes: alpha clips versus alpha hash. Because this is going to be right now it's casting shadow. It was casting shadows on the eyes before. That's not quite what I want. Okay, that's getting a little closer to what I'm looking for. So now I'm going to start casting some lights onto the character. I'm going to kind of draw off in the background and highlight some stuff that are interesting. With these two lights, so I'm going to actually name these. F2 is the hot key for that. This is key light because it's our key view light, the most important one. F2 is our fill light. It fills in the background. Now I'm gonna make lots and lots and lots and lots of lights. So I'm gonna to go to lights and let's do just start. I like to start by put, laying them out as um, little point lights like this because they're easier to move and manipulate. But you can see wherever I put it, it's gonna start highlighting stuff. So I'm gonna create a series of highlights and we can see it just kind of hits that hair up and it creates like a little interesting sheen. The stronger I make it, the more intense that little rim is. And um, the higher my radius, the larger an area it starts to affect. So I kind of do this and it can wrap around a lot up here and it's sort of helping the character step out from the background. So I'm moving it and actually seeing in real time where it's going, what it's affecting. And then I change it to the spot and really zero in on where I want it to be and how much of the head I want it to affect. So I just want like the top of the head with this one. I don't want to get too much of this back ponytail. And that's like one rim light. And I'm actually going to put a ton of these in because you'll see as I knock these in, this control D, let's highlight like this shoulder and this jacket here. The more of these I put in, the more the character is going to stand out from the background. Let's go here. In a technical standpoint, there should probably only be one of these. I can actually just hit rotate from a couple of views. But like, we're not trying to be literal with it. We're trying to get the idea across. I like to keep these pretty sharp. Um, and we can change the angle. 
of how wide or narrow this band is to see how much it's going to affect stuff because I don't want to get everything. Like I said, this is just for jacket. So I kind of have it behind the jacket and then just hitting that little that little touch. Let's get another one. I'm probably going to hit this leg and hip. Again, it's going to help me get it to stand out. Backed off a little bit. So I can see the cone, like where it's going. I could use other lights for this too, like an area light, um, which takes a little bit more computing to do, but it's um, a little bit more powerful and I control more of the shape of it, which is pretty cool. I really like how this is hitting up the corners. Let me uh, hide these guys really quick. And see if I can kind of get a lot of this with just maybe even one big area light right here. Not bad. So it's kind of like we're trying to help that character step out from the background. Give it a rectangle and actually give it a couple dimensions for the size. E. Just playing with the light and seeing how strong of a rim I want. I think like I've got a weird shadow here. I don't really like that. I want to see if I can play a little bit. It's casting, I think this object is casting a really strong shadow. So I might need to try to get my fill a little closer to here, then angle it this way. See if I can hmm. question is like this shadow here, H oh H. So it's this guy that's casting that shadow shadow. Interesting. Okay. Call H. Let me pull this light maybe a little closer to the front. Okay, yeah, that's the shadow that's being cast because it's coming from this dude. I'm gonna do something a little unconventional with this because these two objects right here are both casting pretty heavy shadows in the face, which I don't want to do. I'm gonna cheat. And I'm gonna set it to none. Oh no, this is for the whole thing. So I don't want it to do it none because I want the object to have shadows. I just want to set it to not cast shadows. I have to figure out where it is. In its data somewhere, I can set it to not cast shadow. In the world, somewhere here. All right, got to check it out. I know somewhere in here where the setting is. I know how to get to not receive an object. I'm trying to remember what it is. Okay, so I should have properties window per object. Oh, there it is. 
shadow. So I can just click this, and then this will not cast a shadow on the top, which is what I want, but I'm still seeing it from this light in particular. I guess I'm going to take this object, I'm going to try this in my material, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to set this duplicate material to shadow mode, done, perfect, that's exactly what I want, so I'll use the same one here, and that just keeps it from casting some really strong shadows, even though it's technically more real, it's not the style I want for the character. So I like this, I want a little bit more though. Let's get another one of these. Let's set this one. R, C. But I don't want like so strong on this one, so I'm gonna set this one a lot lower. Even, let's set it to like 20 and see what happens. Pull it up until there's just a little hint of highlights on this one. I think this rim is probably it's stand to go down a little. You don't want to go too overboard with your rim lighting. So when I got this, I might want to pick like a background color. Right now, keep it a pretty gray, which is always a safe choice, but you can also play around or experiment with some different values and saturation. Like it's kind of a cool style right now to do a really colorful background with your character. And I can even do a gradient backdrop if I wanted by uh, setting its color up to be based on a node, like uh, something like so. Good color. Let's go ahead then. Got a little RGB set up in here. I don't like this pink because it kind of like reinforces the color. Thing. Like it's kind of gives like that nice soft background. I think like this is maybe a little too dark. Might have to get a camp, get one light to just almost like just to do a little bit on the shoes. They're not so dark, but it's going to be a lot subtler than some of the other lights and a lot narrower. Real low with this. Because this one's just not liking that. I'm going to back this light off pretty far. Reposition it kind of at her face. Narrow this beam a little bit, and then let's really crank this puppy up. Ooh, much better. I like that a lot, a lot better. And so too, since I'm kind of preferring this side, I think I want to make the power of this rim stronger. Kind of highlighting and haloing here, and I might want to make this rim a lot bigger. Get rid of these rim lights. Just gonna focus on there. Up 
here. Kind of cool. Pull back the strength a little bit though. I'm looking at the leg, it's getting really strong there. And then this one, I think I could go a little bit more this way. A little bit more this way. Cool. I wonder if my glasses aren't quite getting like, they should have some kind of edge on them. Put all these in to make sure we can stay smooth. This is strange. I'm not getting quite the edge reflection I want on it. Like there should be a nice little Fresnel. I'm not really getting that. I've been getting all this, just not getting that little little rim but this is where i might add just like one light in this scene just to kick off the glasses so i'm going to take a two just a light point all i want this point light to do Real narrow. Just need you to highlight this little edge on the glass. Not quite hitting. Make it dark. a little bit It gives me a little sheen there, which is pretty nice. Um, I think I'm gonna change the material a little bit to make them a little bit more. There you go. Okay, let's go to the shading. I'm gonna play with the background a little bit, which has this color. And instead of this, I'm gonna go into input and I'm gonna look for a ramp. I'm gonna set it to a color ramp. Set that to color. This gives me a ramp, but the direction of it doesn't, it's not going in the right direction. So I actually need a mapping setup. which lets me like change maybe, maybe 90 here. Nope. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna go from here into a gradient, like a ramp. Color ramp. Color into this. I'm trying to remember how to readjust angle. It should be a position. I should be blending it with actual texture to get its direction correct. 
because right now it's just positional because it's rotated the wrong way. Seems like that should be fine. Be more searching. Ugh. I'm a doofus. Good job, Anders. I needed one more node. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll turn my uh, input history back on. No one's been able to see what my buttons are. We need a gradient texture. Because that lets me change the vector. And then the factor goes in here. And now I'm actually able to change it. And that's going to let me rotate. Yes. Yeah. Now I have a thing where I can choose a couple of colors. Suppose if I just want to blend it better, I can just make it physically larger. Oh, very strong band running through it. So if I can create another position. So this is to let me now change the background. If I hit F12, I can see what my render is going to look like. I don't like this color. It's a little too getting a little too white. Something like that, maybe. You get to inspect it, check for stuff that doesn't look quite right. Little errors here and there. But overall, it's not doing too bad. I don't like how the glasses are turned out, but you know, beggars and choosers and all. I think for me, the way I like this is uh, I might just stick with a nice flat color for my background instead. Because I like that kind of like look I was getting with the paint. And it feels like that's kind of like the vibe of this character a little bit. Let's see. H, does it look better with that or without it? I think it looks better without it. Although I might want to reposition. I've just been playing with mostly the rims or what I spend a lot of my time adjusting in here. Just kind of like light stuff up. You can see here, okay, so I did some time. I spent some time rendering. I've played around with some couple things. Maybe more time than uh, I said or I promised initially. My bad. I'm going to take this. And now I've got this image, and I can do uh, image, and I can do save. I'm going to go shake it. Render. Do RGB, because I don't need the A, and I'm going to do 16 bit. Save image as. Although I could just do this against the dark or transparent background, which is another option too. Um, and I can like make a background custom in Photoshop. But if I compare this to, again, what ZBrush considers a best possible render, so this is like the best you can get it in ZBrush, really. And I could play around some of the lights and stuff. But if I compare that to this, this feels like so much more like 
professional. It looks cool. It's got a really neat vibe to it. Um, I could give it like a floor, like have a character stepping on something and she could be casting a shadow into the scene instead of just hovering in here. Um, I could be playing with the background more, but I'll show you really quick too. I mean, I see it really quick. Let's go to Affinity Photo. I'm gonna pop into this one. Take this background object, I'm just gonna hide it. And I'm gonna do a render again with no background. I have to turn it off in the render view. So it's that plane, and I need to change my settings to will it render or not. And I'm gonna say no render. You can be here, but you're not gonna render. So now if I hit F12, no render for the background, meaning image, and save. And I'm gonna call this shake it render alpha RGBA. Bit. So this is means it's going to have transparency. Okay. Image. If I'm looking at my Jacob folder, I now have these two versions. That is not yet transparent. I have to set it to seem to be transparent. Okay, so back where I was before, looking at the background. My camera. Ooh, it's done all these cool things like ambient occlusion, a little bit of bloom, green reflection. Don't really need mold motion blur. These are all settings I can do to make things a little bit higher. Like that does make a difference. Turn down like and screen space reflections gives it a little bit of a much better vibe. There it is, my film tab. Transparent. Oh, that's where it was. Let's render this sucker again. There we go. Overwrite this one, all that stuff. Save as. Now I have a version that literally is a transparent background. Great. Now open the folder. Drop in as the project. And that lets me play with this however I want to. I can just kind of fill the background with color or use a fancy gradient. So a little bit of a brighter color this corner and a little bit darker. If I go pink, I might go pink to something a little bluer, but still in that purple range. Like if I go darker, it kind of pops out a little bit better, but I don't want to go like black is really boring. So I find like white to black to be boring. Color gradient is much more interesting. And I can just play with these sliders to get some contrast that are going to look kind of neat. Take this and go a little higher value. Play around with the saturation a little bit. Just see what's going to help my character stand out. Is my overall goal. But I like keeping her on the cooler side of things because it kind of is going to help the yellow of the jacket. Like the more purple I put in, the more the, the jacket is going to stand out. I'm going to pump the side of this up a little bit more. And I'm going to give you a little bit more color and push you a little bit more purple because it's really helping the jacket jump out a little bit more. And then you're, you know, free to 
save it, edit, copy it, paste it, do whatever you want to do with it. So if I compare this now to my original reference, Oh, it was pretty good. Some of the colors didn't translate from poly paint to my material exactly the way I wanted them to. So I might want to add a little bit more warmth into a render or something like that. But I can also edit things in post, which is one of the reasons you bring it to the program like this. So I can always make adjustments in here, like my black and white, my bright contrast, all this stuff. Let's go level first. Another adjustment. Much less a curve. Shadows down a little bit. Oh, my highlight. Oh. Do not hate the other two. And actually, decided I don't levels, but I do want that curve. Highlight up, down. Just effect. I think the fact for the same color. It's kind of giving me a little bit more bump because without it, you can see it looks a little flat by comparison. No. And let's do. Let's contrast brightness would be helpful. I think something a little bit more. In like how am I bumping up that? Okay. I like to just toss them on, see what happens. Ooh, color. So with color balance, I can take something like my shadows and I can push them a little bluer. Maybe even a little purpley. And then let's take my mid tones. I get those a little closer to skin color because that's usually because we don't want to like that makes them look kind of sick. We want to pull some of the green out of the skin tone and head it a little bit more. Definitely a lot redder. And then my highlight bump a little bit more yellow. I can take this whole effect down, so it's not so. Adjustments are fun because I feel like you spent so much time kind of like getting it exactly how you want it. Now you get to just adjust stuff. Adam. I think I want to go color balance before Oops. my vibrant. Turn off vibrant. There we go. So it's kind of making your whole final thing look a little bit better. Um, you know, it's all about focal points. It's about where am I drawing my eye? What am I looking at? What am I interested in? I think, uh oh. My great suspender turned off my YouTube. Uh oh. I wonder what happened. Because I had streaming set up and my suspender noticed that I was clicked away from my YouTube for too long. E. I wonder if I lost all of that. Hey, whoever's my viewer, did you lose everything there a minute ago? Because I think my Chrome app 
that keeps me from accidentally um, keeping tabs open in the background just killed my stream. Yeah. You win some, you lose some. Speaking of lose some. So I got an image here. I can save it. I can put some stuff on it. I can tag it with my logo or whatever else so that I can keep track of. Hey, my name's Andrew and I made this. Branding. What, you're not gonna let me just drag in a transparent version of this? Get big here, all right, well. I'm gonna give it a save, save it as, and take it render. And then this can be another just piece that I made that's for fun. A couple things that you can always go into and physically touch up any areas that didn't really come through. Like I really feel like the eye contrast is something I want to highlight. I might pop in. And just try to figure out like how to darken or brighten some areas. Um, so let's go ahead and set it a little mask. Let's turn this off. Let's go. This guy and I'm gonna do a brightness contrast. Let's see that contrast up. Put that brightness a little higher. And I'm gonna make a mask. This mask I'm gonna fill black. And then I'm gonna paint it white. So now wherever I take this little brush, I'm gonna paint that in. Give it a nice soft brush so I can kind of like transition it. Just one way that I can. This is just like Photoshop. Because I just didn't really feel like her eyes were kind of coming out well enough. So now I have this and I can really. Put it my brightness, my contrast here. It'll only affect that area. Right. You know, you can always, it's not cheating to go back into Photoshop later and just touch stuff up. That's the kind of idea. So save it. Let's um, take my image and I want to crop it a little bit because I think size wise, I want to tighten up the focus a little. Cool. Let's see if I can get my logo in here. I remembered my logo is on my iPad version. Well, whatever. Get it together. Sport PNG size pretty good. Let's go export it. Take it render. Final. And now I can pop it into our Discord. It's just as easy as that. Of 
would say touch ups. It's not really composite. Composite is where you rendered out in all sorts of different layers. In Affinity. But, uh, and there you are. That's how you do all of the things. It's fun. I like doing stuff. I like I like sculpting things. Um, I think here I might sign off with that. It's kind of what I wanted to show today is just how do you go through and render. It took me a little bit more time than I was expecting, but yeah, it's not too bad. If people have questions about stuff, keep in mind uh, project two is due pretty soon. I think my next project, how do I do a uh, Nightwing from the Gotham White Knight series, which is a I thought a pretty cool character design. Chance to do something more full body, do something a little bit more turnaround. I just like the characters on the jacket. Might do a little bit of cloth sim stuff in there. It would be fun to show. Um, but because the next week, class wise, I think what we're looking at, if I pull up our schedule, we're getting into the hard surface kind of stuff. And so that's going to be pretty fun. Um, I think in general, project-wise, I like it. Like everyone can work on using like how to build hard surface objects in here. And so I think, yeah, we want to just have everyone do like some kind of hard surface prop inside a ZBrush. And so the workflow for that before we do like a robot or the uh, next project too is, is you do like a helmet or a robot head or something like that. So uh, thanks for tuning in. For those of you who did, again, this will be recorded and uploaded and people will be able to view it. But otherwise, I'll catch you on the next stream. Uh, Monday, I'll be doing reviews of Project Ones. And, you know, who knows? Like I said, I like getting on. Maybe I'll throw another stream or two up this weekend. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time.